Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for Moritz Leo speaking. Today I'm going to explain to you how the new application Shift Pad from Gem OK works. Um, it's a new random looping generative MIDI sequencer as Gem has defined it. But before we go into it, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. We are inside AUM and uh, I want to show you uh, straight away what you can achieve. So I created a, a small example using shift bud and uh, a number of other applications. So let's play first. As you, can, as you can hear, you have some uh, uh, generative uh, uh, sequences there, um, which are in a loop, but there's also some randomization there, which is uh, happening. So let's start from scratch. So we just go up to the menu here, we click clear and then select sure. Right, so let's start creating a two channel and a MIDI channel. So let's um, pick up for the purpose of the explanation, a simple piano there, and then we are going to load here as a MIDI processor. We're going to choose a shift pad. Okay, and we are going to link the two. All right, so let's open shift pad. As you can see, quite a straightforward interface. If you used the application from Gem before, the bud series, you find the patterns here at the bottom so you can create a number of patterns that so you can shift between one to the other you click on the plus sign to create a new one and of course you can change between one pattern to the other using in this case uh, cc10 of course you can define that if you go to settings you can choose what cc um, message you want to use and also which channel is, is going to be received and you have also access to configure the knob control style, vertical, horizontal, etc., etc., and you have a nice, a simple tutorial as well. Now, when you open it, you have two selection on the top here for note or CC because you can send note or CC messages. When you send note, you can choose the scale, and you can of course take advantage of scale bud as well to create your new scale as well, which is nice. A lot of scales there. You can decide the key. Then the minimal and the maximal octave, which um, makes it uh, absolutely key in terms of uh, narrowing down uh, within uh, uh, the range that you like, what the notes are being sent. Then the velocity, which in this case it will be static, or you can randomize the velocity. And if you decide to randomize the velocity, you have a minimal and maximal as well range. Similar for CC, you choose the CC number that you want the shift button to send, then you have a minimum and maximum value as well. Okay, and then here you have three dials. One is very simple. It's a rate, okay, at the rate of which you send notes out. So it should be self-explanatory. And then you have a length and a chaos um, dial. So let me explain. And in order to explain, I'm going to move to um, Procreate and hopefully um, this will come uh, um, in in the right way. So um, ShiftBud uses a 16-bit um, number, which it randomly generates at the beginning. And as you know, the basis of um, uh, computers is using bits, which are zero and one. So if you think about um, a 16-bit numbers is a group of uh, four groups of um, four bits each, like so. Okay, so one, two, three, four, 16. For the purpose of this explanation, I'm going to use only four bits, but it is applicable to the 16 bits. So remember, um, shift bot uses a 16-bit number, which it will random generate at the beginning. As you know, if you are working with uh, um, binary, 0000, 0, 0, 0 correspond to 0 in our decimal um, system, and then 0, 0, 001 is our 1, and then you go to 0010, 0, 0, which is 2, and you continue like that. 
this is three, and then you have four, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take, for example, a number five, actually, which is this one. And um, so let's assume that uh, um, ShiftBud has generated this number. Of course, it will not use only five, uh, four bits, but it will use 16 bits. So the way it works is that every step of the sequencer, it will shift the bit. So in this case, what it will do, one will go at the top and the rest will shift to the right. So it will be one, then the zero, one, and zero, okay? And therefore the number will be changed. And if we were to continue our table here, then you will have six here, then seven here, right? And then this will be an eight, and these uh, will be a nine, and then you will have a 10. So this one becomes 10, which is one, two, four, eight, eight plus two equal 10. Okay, and it will continue like that. So um, if, if it's going to shift again, it will, uh, um, the zero will become first. So it will do zero, one, zero, one. So it will become five again. Right, this is assuming just a normal shift to the right. Of course, uh, um, you might have uh, uh, the chaos uh, dial on. In that case, it will flip randomly the bit which is being uh, shifted. So what does it mean? So uh, it means that if I was to redraw this example here, and I was starting to with 0101, zero, zero, one, so the number five, and it, it was um, shifting to the right, but also applying a flip, instead of having one zero, one zero, you will have zero, zero, one, zero, which in case we know it's number two so oh, hopefully that explain how it works and what the dial um, knob will do okay so going back to um, shift bud you have a, a length dial which is used to shift by the length which is which is set by the dial and then you have a chaos a chaos dial when it's set to 100%, it will always generate uh, uh, random numbers. If you move it to the right, like so, to the maximum, it will uh, go to loop, and therefore it will shift. It will shift by the numbers of uh, um, that is set in the length dial. If you do the opposite, it will shift by twice the amount. So let me show you an example. So let's move this down to two, which is the minimal, and let's move this up to the maximum on the right-hand side for the chaos, which will say loop. Effectively, the length dial is effective only when you, the chaos dial is either in loop or loop times two. So let's click play. Okay, let's uh, uh, decrease the speed and let it be the rate. Okay, let's uh, make these free. Let's introduce a bit of chaos to change a bit the numbers so it's a little bit better. Okay, now I have a pattern, so let's go back to two and to the loop as well, okay? Because remember, it is random, so you get what you get. So it's moving from A2 to G3, the length is two and is set to loop. Now let's move to loops time two. So you can see it's doing A2, G3, D4, G3, because it's time two. Now let me show you this set again to one loop, but which will be two notes. So A2 and G3, let's make this three. Okay. So each, you have three notes this time because it's the length of, uh, uh, which is set by the length dial. So in this way, you can either loop between uh, uh, different sequences, which uh, have been generated based on the random number at the beginning, or you can have it, regardless of the length uh, settings, you can have it to somewhere here, 
and to actually introduce some random numbers as well. So let's try it a little bit. So we have a piano. So let's set these to um, one eighth, like so. And um, let's um, make it um, major scale. Yes, that's fine. Maybe we go higher in terms of range there. Velocity 90 is okay um, for now. Okay, let's make it to, to always randomize numbers. Maybe we decrease this to one quarter, like so. Okay, perfect. Now let's uh, add uh, another synth here. So one of my always uh, favorite, Red Strike from Ice Gear. And let's create a new shift pad uh, instance, like so. There you go. And let's connect the two, like so. Right. So we have uh, uh, this sound. Okay, really nice. So let's uh, extend um, the screen again and um, use the same scale. Perhaps we lower a little bit the octave, and um, why not? Let's generate uh, 16 here, um, but we put that on a um, actually a normal loop, and we go to the minimal, okay, in terms of rate. to do is to use the CC messages function of shift bud so we are going to uh, search for shift bud again like so we're going to connect that one again to the same uh, red strike uh, synth but this time we're going to use CC messages okay like so I don't want the maximum value perhaps we decrease these down to something like 100 like so and I don't want a minimum value of zero, probably around 15, 16, like at that. We set these to one half. And um, let's see what um, this sound like. So now it will send this CC number one. So let's me connect it to uh, Red Strike. So what I'm going to do is uh, click here where it says Learn MIDI. I'm going to click the cutoff there and I'm going to play. Okay, so in this case, it has received the CC messages and it has uh, established that the number CC1 is actually driving the cutoff here. And you can see it playing. And then, of course, from here, you can, um, you know, enhance it as you like. So, for example, let's add, um, why not, a reverb effect uh, for the piano and also a delay effect, like so. Let's play. Fantastic. Let's uh, give a little bit more body to this synth. So, let's add some chorus. also announce the um, chorus here and a little bit more reverb there like so and then again why not let's have a little bit more fun and let's 
add um, hammerhead as a drum. So uh, let's create a simple pattern, something uh, like, um, why not, like um, that. Um, let's play. <laughs> use another bliss effect because they are lovely so the phaser um why don't we use something like um, this one expand your mind <laughs> When it is in CC mode, Shift Bad will show you the numbers which it will send through as you see messages a value. And when it is in note, of course, it will show you the note which has been translated from that 16 bit number which has been generated. <laughs> going to stop here i hope you enjoyed uh, the tutorial and as always see you at the next video thank you bye